In this video, we're going to learn how to put the date and some fancy designs on the bottom of a wine glass. The first thing we want to do in Inkscape is to create a circle. So we'll click on our circle tool, and while holding Control and Shift, we'll drag our mouse to create a symmetrical circle. If you do not hold Control and Shift simultaneously, you'll end up with an ellipse. Next, we want to size our circle. I've already measured the bottom of my wine glass and determined that I have a working space of about two and three quarter inches. So at the top, I'll change the measurement two inches. And I'll change the width and the height to 2.75. And I'll zoom in. Next, we're going to press Control, Shift, and F is in Frank. This will open our fill and stroke panel. With the circle selected, I'm going to turn off fill by clicking the X, and then I'll go to the stroke panel and click on the first square to give it a nice outline to work with. With the circle selected, I can hit Control D and duplicate the circle, and then I can hold Control and Shift while dragging the corner of the circle inward. And we will end up with kind of a donut. I can close the fill and stroke panel as I'm done with it for now. The inner circle, we want to have about 1.75 inches for width and height. This will give us one half inch on each side all the way around the circles to work with. Finally, we're going to make one more circle by hitting Control D, and then hold Control Shift and make it really, really tiny. In fact, we're going to zoom in really small, while, and then hold Control Shift again and make it really, really small, and then zoom back out. Don't forget that that little circle's in the center. That's important, and I'll show you why in just a moment. Next, we're going to go to our text tool. And using the Samantha Upright text, we're going to make the date March 15th, 2015. And move it into place. And while holding control, we'll adjust the size of the font so that it fits nicely in that space. Next, with the date selected, we'll hold shift and select the outer circle. Click on the text menu. Select Put on Path. And if you notice, it put the text on the outside of the circle. Next, we're going to click off of everything and then select only the outer circle. And we're going to click this button that says Flip Objects Vertically. And you notice it puts it on the inside of the circle, but it's at the top, and we want it at the bottom so we can have a better visual understanding of what we're working with. If I click on the text and then click it one more time, we get the rotate errors. But if you notice, it does not rotate the way we want it to. This is where the little tiny circle we put in the center comes into play. When we click on the date we, twice till we get the rotate arrows on the corners, we get this little plus symbol. This is the axis around which the text will rotate. And we're going to drag that down to the center. We're going to zoom in all the way down to that little tiny circle we made, and we're going to put that plus sign right in the middle of it. And what that does, it gives us a center around which to rotate the lettering, and now we can move it around so that we can see it better. If I drag my ruler down, I can get a guideline. It will give me some idea of positioning for each of my items. Now I don't like to leave that on my screen because objects tend to snap to it, but it is convenient to pull down and work with it from time to time. Next, I'm going to insert some flourishes using the Windows character map in the Samantha Upright font. If I scroll to the bottom, I can select some of these designs.
And using the Samantha font, I'll insert them into my design, position and size them so that they look nice and fit well. It's important to delete what's inside the box each time you select and copy a letter, or you'll end up with a series of letters each time. We can rotate and size these appropriately. And once you have rotated and sized an object appropriately that you want on the opposite side, you can hit Control D to duplicate, and then go to the object, flip horizontal, then move it to the other side. Again, we can use our ruler to gauge our centering and placement. And we'll get a couple more designs that we can insert. And again, we'll rotate and size those so that they fit nicely. And again, we'll duplicate. And flip horizontal and move it to the other side and again use our guidelines for placement. Now we'll move our letters up just a hair and now we want to get rid of our circles so the first thing we'll do is get rid of that little circle out of the center we no longer need it and our outer circle is what the date is tied to. That's the path for it. So if I delete that, you see what happens to my text. It no longer has a path to be on. So instead of delete, before you can delete that, you have to select the date and then do path, object to path. Now we can get rid of that circle as well as the inner circle. Now because these other objects are also characters, we want to select everything and do object to path. And then path combine. We'll save this as a plain SVG file. We'll do a vector upload. And as you can see, our design is a little larger than originally intended because it did not bring it in size exactly like we had it. So we would need to adjust the size just a little. And you can either do that with the edit panel or visually by using the grid. You can turn the grid on and off with a little square up in the corner. And the key to this, when you go to the cut screen, is that you have to select the mirror image because it's going on the bottom of the wine glass. And when you look down at it from the top, it needs to be mirrored so that it shows properly. So I hope this video has been helpful to you. If it has, please subscribe to my channel and feel free to share my video. And I thank you for watching.